That's where we're going today guys, right to the top of that hill shrouded in mist, looks quite mythical. Hello there, I'm really excited today because today we're going to go on one of my favourite walks, uh, Buckton Castle or the remains of Buckton Castle. Uh, I've not been on this one for about 11 years so hopefully I can find my way up and take you guys with me, catch you soon. Yeah, uh, last time I came up here I didn't have much time because I had someone waiting for me at the bottom and she kept looking at a watch like so yeah uh, I had to do it quick but today we should have a lot more time so yeah I'm really excited it's such a cool place up there but I've not had a chance to see it much um, I'm just hoping I can still find my way up uh, from what I remember this is a quite a strenuous climb up but um, be well worth it when I get to the top yeah it's uh it's not the best weather wise it's very grey dreary there's a lot of mist and cloud about um but as usual do we let that stop us nah up this little uh, ladder style thing here the strenuous path continues just uh, pausing to catch my breath back for a minute but um, yeah I could easily do all my cardio at the gym just go there do it all at once uh, you know uh, do the weights do the treadmills do the bike machines but I don't I choose to come and do my cardio outside in nature it's so much more interesting and uh, I understand for some people uh, doing the cardio at the gym's a time thing and I understand that when people have limited time but if you have a bit of time just try and get outdoors and do it instead I mean you're missing so much not just a bit you're missing a lot by just restricting yourself to doing cardio at the gym um, yeah even if it was like once a week or once a fortnight swap going on the treadmills at the gym to doing your cardios outdoors and you'll see great benefits from it all right Geez, man, that's a bit of a heavy sign. Uh, trespassers will be prosecuted. Hmm, that's, uh, that's not for professionals like me, though. This is the uh, strenuous bit, I think, from here on. I'd just like to state at this point, uh, it's not really a beginner's walk, this one. Uh, this is a walk to do when you've got a bit more experience under your belt. Starting to uh, get quite high up now. Still a lot of uh, scorching up here from a huge moor fire you might have heard about up here last year. Um, it was quite extensive and they had to get the army in the end to help put it out. Cool! At the top guys, I finally made it. It's quite strenuous but if you take the time it's not too bad. But like I said, it's not a beginner's walk. Wait till you've got a bit more experience before you try this one. So now I'm stood in the centre of the castle. Uh, so if I look round, you can see these banks a bit, which would have been the circular wall around it. I'm now looking from where the castle walls would have been down into the moat beside it. So you can kind of see that there going round. So I'm now at the bottom of the moat. And uh, if I look up here, that's where the walls of the castles would have been at the top of the moat. Uh, the moat's still in really good condition going round as I go round it now. So yeah, walking down the bottom of the moat now, um, you can sort of get some perspective of what the castle was like, hopefully. Um, I think there was a gate out here and I believe in the Second World War they had a Home Guard air defence unit up here on the castle site because it's such a good vantage point and uh, I'm sure in World War II it's the same as today a lot of the planes use this valley and the reservoirs to sort of track into Manchester Airport and imagine in World War II they used similar things to uh, zoom into Manchester when they were bombing it Bones, are they human? Yeah, I'd just like to point out that uh, this castle is on the edge of a working quarry and uh, there's a sheer cliff face down, so there is fences around but it's still not one for small children, maybe older children accompanied by adults, but yeah, just be careful up here, 
I think uh, that's the sign for the danger keep out sort of things. One of the entrances in there and you can see the sort of the mound of the moat where the wall would have been on top on both sides of this sort of gateway in. Just seen a, a dog walker. He said he uh, nearly pooed his pants when he seen me wandering around the bottom of the moat. Um, had a quick chat with him and uh, yeah, he was fine. <laughs> yeah, do be careful if you do this one. There is some sheer drops on some sides. I tell you what, I wouldn't like to be an enemy trying to attack this castle when it was up in use. It'd be a nightmare to try and get into it. So it would have been so well fortified. So there we go, folks. Uh, a 12th century castle that no one really knows or cares about, just forgotten. No one seems bothered. Uh, hardly any money's ever been invested into investigating it. Um, don't know why, but uh, it's just crazy. But, goes to say, just a little bit of effort and you can be away from the treadmill, away from walking the streets. You can be up in medieval history. Just think about that. It's mad. It's found a cool little stone. So it got something in it. Interesting. So thanks for watching. Thanks for coming along. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Um, so take care and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.